Warning. Manganese heptoxide is an incredibly dangerous compound. It is a strong oxidizer and highly reactive, and these experiments should not be performed without all proper safety precautions. If replicated, this must be done in a well-ventilated area or outside. Today, I will be synthesizing and exploring the science behind a very dangerous chemical, manganese 7-oxide, better known as manganese heptoxide. This idea is actually derived from a Reddit thread in r chemistry that asked, what chemical would be closest to the fictional green acid seen in cartoons? The most like comment mentions manganese heptoxide and sulfuric acid, and that's exactly what I'll be making today. I'm separating this video into two parts. The first one, which is this one, will be covering just the synthesis and the science behind it, while the second will be strictly about the reactions. Before we begin, it's important to note just how dangerous this chemical is. In this video, I'll be wearing a face mask, goggles, a lab coat, nitrile gloves, and welding gloves on top. Getting this stuff anywhere on your skin would cause extreme chemical burns, which could lead to many health issues. Manganese heptoxide is rather unstable and decomposes at room temperature. Therefore, no more than 25 milliliters should be synthesized at one time, and it must all be used immediately. It also explosively decomposes at temperatures greater than 55 degrees Celsius. So, why is manganese heptoxide so incredibly reactive in the first place? Let's take a look at three manganese oxo species. As you can see, in both the permanganates and the heptoxide, the manganese has an oxidation state of plus 7. Therefore, by definition, these substances will be highly oxidizing due to the large amount of oxygen that is willing to react. However, the permanganates are significantly more stable than the heptoxide, even at this maximum oxidation state. This can be explained simply by looking at their structure. It is far easier to cleave the oxygen holding together the two manganese 7 tetrahedra than the one on the permanganates. This makes the manganese heptoxide incredibly reactive and unstable. Because of its reactivity, manganese heptoxide must only be synthesized with inorganic equipment, such as metals, preferably stainless steel, or glass. Plastics and other organic compounds can easily be oxidized, likely resulting in a chemical fire. Now, let's get into the synthesis. Making manganese heptoxide is actually rather simple and only includes two chemicals, sulfuric acid and potassium permanganate. Plenty of glassware is also needed as well to contain the reaction. The amount of each used actually is rather arbitrary and the purity of each doesn't really matter either. The sulfuric acid will be used in excess regardless. It's incredibly important that the temperature of this reaction is kept as low as possible, especially below 55 C, which is why the sulfuric acid is chilled to between 0 and 10 C before beginning. First, a decent amount of chilled sulfuric acid is added to a watch glass. Then, a small amount of potassium permanganate is added and gently stirred. It is important to only add a small amount at a time, as this reaction is very exothermic and can easily lose control. This also prevents the mixture from becoming too thick, which happens if too much potassium permanganate is added. More can be added as needed, as long as this is avoided. What's happening here is the potassium permanganate is reacting with the sulfuric acid to form permanganic acid which is quickly dehydrated by the sulfuric acid to form the manganese heptoxide. The overall reaction is as shown with byproducts of water and potassium bisulfate. Here are the mechanics of the reaction using the structures. The potassium permanganate loses the potassium ion and gains a hydrogen. Then the excess sulfuric acid performs a dehydration synthesis, removing a water and combining two permanganic acids at an oxygen vertex. This is another reason for the reactivity of this compound. While permanganic acid is mostly stable with one single bond, manganese septoxide has two on one vertex. Therefore, the tetrahedra connected can rotate on these bonds and they can break much easier. After the potassium permanganate and the sulfuric acid are combined, the synthesis of manganese septoxide is complete. 
you can see that it is actually a nice green color along the edges with a dark green in the center that looks almost black. It very well fits the description of the video game Acid. To dispose of manganese heptoxide, simply place it in water. It'll decompose there into a beautiful pink manganese 4 oxide. It's important to let the solution sit for a while to ensure the complete destruction of the heptoxide. Make sure to check out part 2 of this video where I react manganese heptoxide with various substances, including a human flesh substitute. Here's a quick clip from that next part, which I'll link in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and comment to let me know what you think. To see more videos like these, feel free to subscribe as I'm currently posting at least weekly. Make sure to head over and check out part 2 of this video, and I'll see you next time.